So Hart, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Clark. So um, if you could spend a little time telling us about your background, how you came to AWS and what your current role is. Sure, so before AWS, I was working in the defense uh, contractor intelligence space, doing a lot of systems integration work, and I, I really liked it. I loved the mission, I loved supporting uh, the US government and governments around the world and what they did, and some uh, regulated industries as well. Um, but I'd always kind of maintain this list in the back of my head of the top security companies, right? And in the early part of my career, those were largely consumer focused. So antivirus, you know, personal firewalls on your desktop, stuff like that. But over time, that list migrated into companies that were providing the infrastructure that makes, you know, the world go. Right. And so it's companies like Amazon, right? And other big infrastructure providers. And so I was really uh, at a point in my career where I was looking for that next move and I wanted to go someplace where they were really innovating on security that was gonna make a difference, not just to a few customers who are very important, but really to, to the world. And so I had this opportunity to come to AWS uh, and took it. And, and what is your current role at AWS today? Uh, these days, I'm the director of the security and infrastructure global specialty practice uh, in professional services, which is a bit of a mouthful. But what it really means is that uh, my job is to help customers build the confidence and technical capability to operate their most sensitive workloads with us in the cloud. Thank you for that, Hart. We sort of switch gears to the customer perspective. Yeah. Um, our customer CISOs, you know, they're they're always looking for hiring security talent, and it can be very difficult to to find those types of people. When you have a shortage of security talent, mm -hmm. what kind of advice would you give to a CISO or other hiring manager at a customer organization as far as looking for that right person, even if they may not have the, the sec deep security skills that you're looking for? Yeah, I think a lot of it comes down to that corporate culture, right? And, and we often find ourselves in sort of two different conversations. The first is bringing in deeply technical uh, engineering resources, mm -hmm. and then developing a program to get them comfortable with whatever the new technology is, right? Lambda, containers, whatever it might be, EKS, right? Uh, or, uh, the security aspect of it. So bringing in that deeply technical engineering resource and helping them understand how to build securely, how to think securely, how, for example, to uh, begin every sprint by starting with a threat model mm -hmm. to generate your user stories that you're then gonna sprint against instead of just the functional requirements from the product yeah. manager, right? So those sorts of skills. Um, and then the other end of the spectrum, of course, is there's a lot of really talented security people in other parts of the security community. So they might be in audit, they might be in compliance, right? They might be in other areas, and it's an opportunity to bring them into a different part of the security community and uh, allow them, uh, if they're interested, to become more technical, to develop those engineering skills, to develop those product development and product management skills. And um, that's really helpful as well. The, the one thing I often offer, and again, it goes back to something we look for on our team is, you know, the, the creative types tend to be the most successful, right? The lateral thinkers, the artists, the poets, right? They, they tend to be really good at making that adjustment over time, right? And uh, not to, to stereotype anybody, but right. that kind of flexibility and agility and mindset often allows them to kind of come along quite quickly. Customers, they seem to really be turning towards the security engineering, build security into applications and infrastructure that they're, uh, they're managing. As you know, there's another aspect of security and that's sort of operational security and just making sure everything is operating as it should and let me see a red flag here and let me react to that, that sort of thing. What's, what's that right balance between the sort, sort of engineering mindset and the, the operational mindset? Yeah, you know, that's a super important question. I actually spent quite a bit of time talking to senior executives about that because when they're early in their journey, not just with the cloud, but I think with application modernization, which many of them are doing regardless of, of their involvement with AWS, the emphasis is often on the dev part of DevOps. And so they're thinking about really how do they build and deploy their workloads better. They haven't necessarily thought all the way through the operate part. And then when you add in security operations, right, it, there's, a, there's a very particular nuance there that really needs to be addressed. One of the things that I've found is helpful is when we start talking about operations, we can't really talk about programs and initiatives anymore, right? A lot of times during a migration, a lot of times during a new workload build, it's really very programmatic. You have a product manager, you have a migration lead, mm -hmm. but when we're talking about security operations, you have to have that 24 by seven, 365, right? Reliability, 
security and you know sense and response right. type activity, which comes with a conventional op center mentality. Now we don't need to be constrained by the four walls of an actual operation center, right? Because we have systems in the cloud that will help us do the same thing. Right. But we need to sort of shift that that executive mindset. And it's often as simple as saying, well, what metrics matter to you in operations, right? We've talked about the migration. We've talked about the development. We know it's important to you and what success looks like. But what does security operations look like to you from a metric standpoint? And once we have that conversation, we can often very easily orient into what that looks like and now start to truly bring dev and ops together in a meaningful way from a security and safety standpoint. So, you know, I'll ask the million dollar question. What are, what are some key metrics that customers are typically looking for from an operational perspective? Yeah, you know, it, it depends again on, on their goals and their objectives. You know, one of the things we'll look at are things like dwell time. One of the really cool things about um, having immutable infrastructure, right, is that you can have very low rehydration rates for your entire data center in the cloud, right? Instead of taking months or sometimes years to rebuild and rehome an application, uh, many of our customers have it down to hours, right? And some minutes for smaller workloads, right? And so, you know, if you can rebuild your entire data center in an hour, now you can start to think about, you know, how do we change the conversation about dwell time for an adversary, right? How do we change the conversation around vulnerability management and the long tail of patching, right? And we can start to really look at those, uh, those metrics that help us drive uh, agility, scalability, reliability, right? Which ultimately lead to security. So a lot of our conversation today has been around uh, engineering, uh, security operations, sort of the traditional nuts and bolts of running a security organization. In a lot of the conversations I have with CISOs, they're really concerned about uh, how do I report security in the appropriate business context? And how do I frame cyber risk in business terms that my board or my uh, senior directors will understand? Do you have any offerings around this uh, in this place with with sort of security as, as a as a business leader as opposed to just sort of security operations and the traditional metrics that we think about? Yeah, we do, and it's actually another great example of working backwards from the customer. Right, uh, early on in the days of building the security part of the security risk and compliance practice, um, we started to get those kind of questions from customers and. Um, you know, I had experience, and many of the people at the time of my team had experience in security consulting, mm -hmm. but none of us had had the personal responsibility that a CISO had right. in protecting the organization, right? And so after getting that request a few times, we thought, well, we've got to go find some CISOs to come work with us, right? right? And so that's just what we did. We built an executive security advisory practice where we have chief information security officers, heads of risk and audit, um, who have gone on the cloud journey themselves with AWS, and they're now on our team, and they can do that peer-level advisory work, right. backed up by the strong engineering and operational folks to actually help implement that executive strategy, right? And it's, it's been really, really good. Um, we're able to have conversations around metrics, right? Um, that, and I don't mean metrics like the operational metrics we were talking about earlier. We're talking about um, key performance indicators. We're talking about setting security expectations for the organization right. that are going to drive year-over-year -year transformation, not just hitting a particular number this year, right? Got it. So uh, with the customer CISOs that you work with, are you seeing any trends in their uh, sort of business level reporting to their boards? Uh, I when, when I speak to customer CISOs, uh, you know, I'd like, yes, you still need to have all the metrics of the machines we patched and the viruses we stopped and the attacks yeah. we stopped and things like that. But what's the advice you give to articulate that in business terms to people who may not have the deep security expertise yet may hold the purse strings to your budget and, and other operational yeah. needs? I think there's a few different points of view. You know, one is the transformation angle that I mentioned earlier. If you set the right goal and expectation, Right, there's this tremendous pull-through effect. And an example I'll use is when you, uh, as the CISO, set the goal of being able to rehydrate your entire data center in the cloud right. Right, in a, a few days, let's say, right. every 48, 72 hours, right? Working backwards from that, it has this massive knock-on effect to how you do BCP DR, right? 
how you do uh, build, deploy, and operate, how you do test, right? right? It forces everybody to automate. It forces everybody to accelerate, which ultimately reduces time to value for every one of those under the hood infrastructure activities, right? right. So lower cost, faster to market, greater response time for your customers, right? So it, it, it really drives some great, great outcomes across the business by having one right security expectation that, by the way, is probably a yearly transformation. So it might be, you know, we want to get down to rehydration every 45 days this year. Right. And then we want to get down to 15 days next year. And then we want to be down to 48 hours the following year. And so year over year, you're going to use that one security objective, right? right? To, to drive all these other business outcomes. And then track that with the board as you're reporting to them. Exactly. Hart, thank you so much for joining us today. Cool, thank you for having me.